Hey everybody, welcome back to Nuvida's channel and today we're looking to a new component that came out in Nux 3.17 but was even around for a bit longer. It's time for Nux time. Here we go. Rendering dates and times in your application are not that difficult, right? I mean, we have dates.now or like new date and whatsoever. Commonly, of course, we use some date uh, libraries to deal with dates because, well, dates are a bit of a pain in JavaScript. Temporals will change that, but that's not even a topic here. There is an issue, though, when you have dates, and especially with regarding time, together with server-side rendering. And for this, let's jump straight away into demo application. As usual, the demo application is as minimal as possible, just some styling for the app itself and dev tools enabled. In our app.view, the only thing we do is we render a new date. So let's have a look at that in the browser and see what's happening here. And actually not much. What we expect, we see the time when I record this video and if we refresh, we'll do exactly the same. And that's all good as long as you are lucky because if we refresh a couple more times, we will see at some point, and it's just a matter of time of triggering, and here we go, a hydration text mismatch. And you may have also seen it flickering on the screen itself because what happened is that on the server, 21, 51, 58 was rendered, but the actual time of the client was 59. So that happens because the client takes a little bit of time to get everything up and running, get the application ready, and of course the whole hydration process. And we all know hydration mismatches are annoying, but in this case, well, what should you do? I mean, you use date.now in your application or anything else relating to date, and we're not wanna start with what is with different time zones and the browser on the server, it's all a big pain point. So how do we fix that? Well, with the new Nux time component. Let's check it out. The Nux time component was introduced in the 3.17 release, as mentioned early in the intro, by Daniel Rowe, but actually it has been around for a bit longer. Thanks to Daniel's Nux time package, which is now archived, well, you could have used it before. So in the case of not being on 3.17 and somehow being blocked by upgrading, maybe through another feature, like uh, the async data changes, but that's a topic for another video. Let me know if you want to know a bit more about that. Well, then you have to actually use the package and that's fine as well. Even though it's archived here, because now it's in the core, before you can just use it, it's still available as a module. Pretty easy to add with NPX Nuxiet latest module add time. Here you go. And if we add it to application, things will just work. So let's do that. Instead of rendering now, we can just render the Nux time component and we don't even have to pass anything in, but we probably should pass in something called date time, right? Or date and time. And we could just say date dot now, or we could also say now dot value off and we get the same result. And if we take a look into the browser now, then we'll see the following. We see a date rendered here, the 15th of May, 2025, which is actually today or for you whenever you see the video in the past. But that's not actually what's rendered here. I mean, sure, that's there as well, but what's with the time and the format, it's all a bit strange. First of all, let's remove that now from here, so we only have the output from before, right? And now let's fix that regarding next time. Because it's not that hard. Next time actually takes all the values that the Intel.DateTime formatter also takes as the options here. So we have the locales and then all the options. So here we could, for example, say, let's render it in the German format and then have a big bunch of options here that we can set. And these are also possible to pass in here as props. So we can set the locale, same idea to the E, to the N, whatsoever. We can also say, hey, please render only the time style and the time style should be in this case um, long, for example. And if we have a look into it now, removing this example here for the Intel API, if you don't know about it, check it out. And we take a look at the browser, then we see, oh, there we go. We get the right format, wonderful. And the best part is here now, we can refresh as often as we want. This will never throw a hydration warning during SSR, even though the time on the client might not match anymore. This is because next time will simply take the time that was set on the server side and take it as the true source. And we will take a look how that works in a bit. There's one more note though. Because you might have wondered, okay, Nux time is added to the core of Nux, so will this increase the bundle size? Luckily not, because as most of the default Nux components, if you don't use them, well, they're not part of the bundle, they're fully tree shakeable. So no worries about the additions, we always want to make sure that your bundle stays as small as possible by default. But now let's take a look behind the scenes and see how Nux time actually works. 
And here we have the Nux time.view file in the Nux3 code base, which is running here in the VS Code. Of course, the link to this file is also in the show notes as usual, so you can have a look yourself and browse through the code. Don't have to clone the Nux3 repository. But of course you can if you want to, right? I did this here too. And this is the latest commit on main at the time of recording, uh, which also the application we've seen ran against because this was running in the playground of the Nux3 uh, repository here. Okay, so we dig into that. This is a normal single file component called Nux time. We have a template that's pretty small. It's just a time tag here. So just a very plain HTML uh, tag with some attributes. We bind something called data set. We'll look into that in a bit. We set the date time to the ISO date, a title and the formatted date. Now we don't know much about that. So we should take a look into the script setup part. And to begin with, we see a lot of things going on here. A lot of, lot of properties. But as mentioned before, these are all important for the Intel format, if we take a look at Intel dot, we also see two things. We see the daytime format down here, but also the Intel relative time format. And that's something I didn't even show you yet. Yes, next time can also display relative uh, time formats and they will even update. So you can have something like five minutes ago or like one, two, three, four, five seconds ago in the future and so on, so on, just for that component. Pretty simple actually works out of the box. You just have to set the relative prop. But that's not even why we're here. Let's start again from the top. We have all these props. The most important one, well, we've talked about it, everything that's relevant for the formatter and the date time to pass in the actual, well, date time, of course. And then title, of course, flexibility, also important, the relative prop as we've described. Now let's collapse that. And we have a few more things here, but we don't want to bother with these first. Let's jump into this big if import.meta.server block, because we take a look at a component that solves an issue with hydration and server-side rendering. So of course we take a look at the server-side first, then what's happening during hydration, and then at the rest and the client side. That's, I think, kind of reasonable. Also, if you haven't heard about hydration yet, well, check out the video linked as usual, talked about it a couple of times, and it's good to know what hydration actually is. Back in the code, on the server-side, what's happening? Well, first of all, we have this data set here. Right, it's a record of things, it's empty by default. And for all the props that's not daytime, well, we get the value. And then if the value exists, we actually try to name the whole thing, taking the prop and getting that as keep up case. So as like an HTML attribute that's valid and then put it into data set by putting data dash in front of it. So we basically assign, or in this case, Nux, the Daniels component assigned custom data attributes and eventually this data set, as we've seen, is bound to our time component. So here to our time tag, to be precise. So all data attributes are here on time itself. If we take a look at the browser, we also see that. So right here in the DevTools, we, for example, see data dash time dash style equals long right here. And this is, of course, part of the whole story. This is the custom time style that we've set and it's in here, it's important because it was needed when we're rendering the date. But going back to the code, okay, now we've put everything in this data set and this is bound later on, that's great. Now we have a big block here in this on prehydrate part and probably most of you are not aware of the on prehydrate hook. If you want a whole video on that, please let me know because this is not only powering things like next time but also the color mode and can come quite handy. It is a quite new lifecycle hook that allows you to hook into Nuxt basically before hydration is happening. So that's why it's called on prehydrate. And that means you can change things like set defaults and so on. And Nuxt time is using that hook to do something quite interesting. First, it sets the current date to either, well, date.now, if window.underscore Nuxt time is not set, but otherwise it will also set that. So this is like a logical assign operator to say, take this value or set it and take date.now straight away. So here, the time will be zeroed in. On prehydrate, we have one single time that is the base for everything else. That's quite important, so time is not diverging depending on how often the next time component is used on the page. So it comes in handy. Then we have a two camel case operator here. That's basically the reverse operation for our prop in keep up case here, right? So we have that two camel case, and then we do a few things. First, we get the date, which uh, is the date time that was set before. We'll take a look at it as well. Transform into a date. It must exist because it was set earlier on. We'll see that as well. And then we say, okay, there will be an options attribute. And then we go through things, everything that's with data. We basically, as said before, do the reverse operation and then set them once again to have this full option available. 
If relative is set, then there's a bit of extra handling. That's fine. We can ignore that. Not that important, but check it out if you want to. For the default case, we just say, let's set up the formatter for Intel daytime format with the options and the locale, and then just format it, format the date and set the text content. So that's what's basically happening before hydration is kicking in. So we also ensure that here on the server side, things are working as expected. It, the right value is chosen. And we also zero in on this underscore nux time now. All right, this is the whole on prehydrate part here. And then the server block is done. The rest will happen. Well, we'll see the conditions there. One other thing is that we see also that the window object is extended by nux time now, which might exist and might be number. Well, it's a, a Unix timestamp, so that makes a lot of sense. Okay, and now we go all the way up again and see what else is happening. After defining the props, we checked it already, we have a look at the element. And for this, the, well, get current instance, like a private method is used. We take the vnode and the element that is actually attached to that vnode. Okay, so far so good. You have basically a time element. And then we take a look, is there render date? So getting the date time attribute and also the data locale, if that exists. Then we take the next step, we need it for later, and we continue. Now we have the date as a computer, and that's pretty important because first of all, what we do, we check a few things. We take a look at the date time, so that's set through our props. And if there is a render date, so if there is an element available that has the date time and also next app is hydrating, then please, this should return the new date based on the render date because this is the source of truth here, right? That's also what we made sure is available early on for server-side rendering. But of course, there must not be necessarily server-side rendering. We could also go from slash A to slash B, right? The soft navigation it's called, or as I call it, internal navigation, then that's fine. We don't have to worry. If props the daytime doesn't exist for whatever reason, well, then we just return a new date. Easy as that. And otherwise, we just turn a new date based on props the daytime. So all the conditions are covered and the date is now correct. Then we have this now ref, and that's pretty interesting because we have a couple of conditions here. So we say on the client side, when the next step is hydrating and next time now is set, we want to say now is based on next time now. Also makes sense because we zeroed in on that time. Otherwise, we just say it's a new date and we're fine. So if these conditions don't apply, it's okay. Then we have a bit of a handling here for relative. So if relative is mode is on, and if we say, okay, we're on the client side, so not on the server side, then of course we want to make sure that now is always updating every second with a simple set interval. And also when the component unmounts, we want to clear that. So this will allow this continuous update for five minutes ago, six minutes ago, and so on. And then we have the formatter. We've briefly taken a look at that saying, okay, let's get all the props. Let's set all the options, either to relative time format or daytime format here. We're good to go. And last but not least, the formatted date as set before. If it's relative, a few things come on here. Otherwise, let's just get the format that we said before and format the date and we're good to go. Of course, if things change, this will be updated as it's computed. Then the ISO date is just the date as ISO string and the title as we've set. So that's the whole magic here. Thanks to the unprehydrate hook, we've seen a few things set that will make sure that the server side time is not only preferred, but actually a source of truth. And of course, if that's not set, the client will also take over. And actually, that's the whole magic of the next time component. Now, let me know, any questions left regarding the component? Does it make sense for you? And do you want to hear a whole video or a whole topic on the on pre hybrid hook and where it might be useful? Please uh, let me know in the comments and if you have any questions down there as well. Otherwise, check out the latest Deja View episode. Uh, after a short break, we're back on track there. So don't miss it out. A lot of interesting stuff to cover. So that's all for now. I hope to see you next Friday for next premiere. Or if this is not the most recent video, then take a look around the channel. You know how it works. Uh, until then, see you soon and happy hacking.